I had this Kinect roller coaster I made a few months ago that was unrealistic and didn't work properly. It looked cool and I could easily fix it up, but since I had all this time in quarantine, I had something else in mind. My dream job is to design roller coasters. Since many of today's coasters are precisely designed on computers, I had an idea of designing a Kinect coaster on my computer using No Limits 2. This would make building the coaster easier and I could have the same advantages that the professionals do, but I would need to start with getting Kinect parts into No Limits 2. I started with finding a scale, which was pretty easy because the Wild Mouse track in real life is 2.9 feet wide, and the Kinect track is 2.9 centimeters wide, which gave me my scale of 1 centimeter equals 1 foot. I used it to roughly recreate all the Kinect pieces in SketchUp, and even made pre-built structures to make designing coaster supports faster. The next step was to bring Kinect's physics into No Limits 2. I knew that the Kinect's car had more friction than a regular coaster car, and using what I learned in physics and math class, I could find the coefficient of friction to put into No Limits 2. I made an angled ramp at a constant speed and found my answer, but I quickly realized No Limits 2 uses a friction parameter and not a coefficient. This meant I was going to have to find another way to put the friction into No Limits 2. So I made a similar angled ramp in No Limits 2 and changed the parameters until it went down at a constant speed. One thing I was worried about was the momentum of the car. Having more mass in a coaster train leads to faster speeds because it can overcome friction and the Kinex coaster car only weighs 17 grams. If I wanted to make the weight to the scale of a real train, it would have to be over 17 kilograms. As much as I wanted to make a big coaster right away, I wanted to make sure my physics were correct, so I made a simple prototype. I made a spine on the track to give it extra strength, and I built it shortly after, and it worked just as my design went. I made a second barrel roll prototype to test my limits with my big design, and I could sort of use heart lining. It was time to make my big design. I made a replica of the area I had to work with around my bed and my desk. The layout consisted of three inversions with two dive loops and a cutback, and it was a Gerslauer style coaster. Designing with microconnects is much more difficult because the traditional set, you can do all sorts of curves with the set of pieces and tubings. And I had to make sure to calculate when I could use curved pieces, for example the wave turn in the layout. I also had to use set radius curves, which were often pretty sharp, and I tried to use straight pieces as much as possible. Here's the POV of what the ride would look like in real life. I began construction on the first drop and inversion. I knew the first dive loop looked way too tall. I still built it anyway just to be sure, but to my disappointment and to my expectations, it valued. I already invested a lot of time into this design and I really liked it. After thinking about all my choices, I decided to convert it into a launch coaster. Construction was easy thanks to my detailed design. All the pieces fit together perfectly. I did have to change the cutback into an overbank due to lack of speed, but everything else was exactly the same as my No Limits coaster. Designing it on the computer made the end result better than anything I could have done by hand, which made the process worth it. The end result is a smooth and realistic coaster that looks great and works consistently. If I wasn't using micro pieces, this process would be even more powerful. Either way, it is really satisfying to see one of my coaster designs come to life in a working model.